Well, it looked for a while as if our heroes really had it made, didn't it? They discovered the floating mountain full of upsidasium and flew it to Washington in spite of the attempts of Boris and Natasha to stop them. Fui, foiled again. That's curses foiled again, darling. Please, Natasha, this is kiddie show. But things began to go wrong when Boris disguised himself as Rocky in order to steal the upsidasium. And although he failed in his nefarious attempt, he did manage to escape disguised as a famous general. Don't worry, I shall return. But in escape he had left our heroes at the mercy of his superior, Mr. Big. Gentlemen, I'm afraid your hour has come. Mr. Big has spoken. Our hour has come? Is that standard time or daylight saving? Poor Winkle, we gotta rush him. Rush him? I can't even see him. Just that shatter on the wall. The light's coming from over that way. He must be there. There's no use whispering, gentlemen. You hit him high, I'll hit him low. I must bid you good... Now, Poor Winkle! And our brave boys hurled themselves directly at Mr. Big. <laughs> Winkle's effort to hit him high fails when he hit the opposite wall. I must have gone right through him. But Rocky's hitting him low had better luck for he crashed directly into Mr. Big? Poor Winkle, look at him. That's Mr. Big? Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? He is the littlest thing I ever did see. But how come your shadow looks so fierce? Oh, that was quite easy. I just did this in front of the light. The shadow of the gun was supposed to frighten you away. Well, we were a little scared. Then why did you attack me? Because we were a little stupid, too. Well, looks like it's the end of the trail, Mr. Big. Not quite, my fuzzy friend. Grab him, Bullwinkle! Too late for Mr. Big dash between Bullwinkle's legs and out of the room. You let him get away, Bullwinkle! If I was just knock-kneed instead of bow-legged, I'd have got him. Quick, out! But with astounding speed, the tiny figure of Mr. Big dashed down the hallway toward the main upsidasium vault. He's gonna get to the upsidasium, Rock! I don't think so, Bullwinkle. Look what's in front of the vault. Sure enough, two brawny military policemen stood guard before the door armed with heavy nightsticks. But when they tried to stop Mr. Big, they succeeded only in knocking themselves out. <laughs> at last I have arrived at my goal. The world's entire supply of upsidasium. Meanwhile, in the Fort Knickknack guardhouse, General Broadbeam was still trying to prove to the provost marshal that he wasn't an imposter. Just take this examination. But I'm a general. Look at these stars. You might have bought them at the five and ten. That's where I got my eagles. But confounded bogus, you know me. What makes you think so, stranger? Stranger? Bogus, you're my brother. Sentiment will get you nowhere, fella. Now, just answer these questions. And in the meantime, the genuine imposter, Boris Baranov, was having the time of his life. Left column march, right column march, fifth column march. Boris, we got to go. Oh, please, Natasha, I'm just crazy about giving order. Darling, you just crazy, period. Pass in review. And Boris would have had a delightful afternoon if a voice hadn't suddenly called. Hey, General, sir. Oh, oh. I don't like to interrupt you, General, sir, but that Mr. Big Feller is in the upsidasium vault. Hmm. Well, I tell you what we're going to do. You two stand over here against the wall. What's he doing, Rock? I don't know, but remember, he's a general. Yeah, maybe he's got a plan. And Boris certainly did, for he stood before a line of soldiers and commanded... Left face, ready, aim, fire! And a volley of rifle shots rang out. Don't miss our next exciting episode. Bye-bye, Boris, or farewell, my ugly. And now it's time for... Time for the dancing fool, Bullwinkle. Again? And now for one of our special fairy tales. Yeah. Once upon a time, there was a girl who loved to enter contests. Her every waking moment was spent in thinking up soap slogans, identifying mystery personalities, and taking part in amateur talent shows. It was a fascinating way to spend her life, and there was only one thing wrong with it. Just once, I'd like to win a prize. At that moment, a strange little man appeared before her. Little lady, your troubles are over. I can fix it so you'll win every contest you enter. Hi. Well, let's just say that I'm an elf with magic powers and let it go at that. What's it gonna cost? Cost? Not a thing. 
You just agreed to let me have your first child, is all. Yeah, but why do you want my first child? Looky. Oh, gee, can I walk a Baki boys camp? Right. And for every new camper, I get a cash bonus. Is it a deal? It's a oh, deal. Oh, 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 oh. Sure enough, at the next talent contest, the girl stuck plain straw into a box, cranked a handle, and out came spun gold. Of course, inside the box, the little man was doing all the work. He spun the gold in loops, braids, cable stitches, and actually finished off with a series of gold lace doilies. Naturally, the girl won first prize, a pearl-handled sifter. Then, with the little man's help, she won contest after contest. The number of beans in the jar is 8,426. Right. Yay! Yay! Sometime later, the girl entered a drawing contest and for the first prize won a genuine life-size prince whom she soon married. Then, one day in a national Name the Baby contest, she won a beautiful baby boy. Of course, by the time they delivered him, he'd grown a little. Uh, hiya, Mum. Just then... Come in. Hello, hello, hello! My, isn't he the big one, though? Who are you? How could you forget? Looky here! Hoochie, can I walk a Baki boys camp? That's right! Summer season is just beginning! Yeah, but how do I get my child back? Easy, Princess. You just guess my name. Fred? No. Amy? Clyde? Beowulf? Bye-bye! No, this was one guessing game the Princess couldn't seem to win. Obadiah, Jethro, Throckmorton? Meanwhile, at Camp Ochi Kinawakabaki, the young Duke of Dunda grew into a spirited lad full of fun and mischief. No, no, no! Naughty, naughty! Mustn't blow up the counselor's cabin! Ouch! A year later, the little man took the Duke back home. Well, here he is, Your Highness. Brown as a berry. Yeah, but I haven't guessed your name. It's Rumpelstiltskin, madam. Oh, nonsense. What kind of a name is that? Let's see, um, Orton, Holly? Honest, it's Rumpelstiltskin. R-U-M-P. Well, I'll give it some thought. You bring him back next year. The next year was a busy one for the princess. She was now so famous for winning contests that she began to make public appearances. She won the Miss Kingdom contest, Yay. she won the annual royal boat race, Yay. and she would have won the grand steeplechase except that she pulled up lame in the last oh. hurdle. Meanwhile, her little son, the Duke of Dunder, had grown into a bonny lad, fun-loving and adventurous. Cut, cut, young fellow. That's not being a good sport. A year later, the princess heard another knock on the door. Who is it? You know, Your Highness, my name is... Newton! I just know it's Newton! It's Rumpelstiltskin! R-U-M-P... Norris! Orville! Fidel! No, no, it's... Well, I guess you'll have to take the boy back to camp. I can't, lady. Looky! Unemployed? Camp Ochikanawagabaki is no more. Uh, it burned down, Mom. But I still haven't guessed your name. Try me next year. The little man trudged sadly away, followed by the Duke of Dunder. But just then, the princess saw an announcement of the biggest contest of all, Mother of the Year. But to win that contest, she had to have... A child! Hey! Hey, come back! Come back who? All right! Come back, Rumpelstiltskin! Right. Here you are, lady. He's all yours. <laughs> <laughs> and the little man slipped blithely away. Next day, the princess was on hand with her child for the Mother of the Year contest, but her heart sank when she saw who was to judge it. Well, look who's here. Mom, it's Uncle Rumpo. You want to win this contest, right? Right. You want him back again? Oh, no, no. All I want is a job for life, somewhere in the castle. Something easy, you know. How about royal caretaker? Sounds great. Good. Sign here. So the princess won the Mother of the Year award. She was the only contestant anyway, and the little man became royal caretaker. Okay, Your Highness, what do I take care of? Read the contract. Exclusive care of the Duke of Dunder. That's me. Oh, but this is terrible. How do I get out of this contract? Easy. Just live up to paragraph three. See, paragraph three. Oh, no. Is your name Mildred, Myrtle, Helen, Celia, Ethel? Eeny, meeny, chilly beeny, the spirits are about to speak. Are they friendly spirits? Friendly? Just listen. And now, once again, here's Bullwinkle's Corner. Hello there, culture gang. Today's poem is Excelsior by Henry W. Longfeller. 
The shades of night were falling fast when through a alpine village passed a youth who bore mid snow and ice a banner with the strange device, Excelsior! Americana should dumb cop. He dared the pine tree's withered branch. He braved the fearful avalanche. A tear stood in his bright blue eye, but still he answered with a sigh, Excelsior! Pray tell me, said a mountaineer, what in the world you're doing here? And why you climb up here so high just to give that silly cry? Excelsior? That's the one. The answer came both quick and blunt. It's just the advertising stunt. I represent Smith, Jones and Jigs, a lumber company that makes Excelsior! <laughs> come to Canada, and with it a happiness and contentment had settled over the countryside. Everywhere, people were laughing and singing. <laughs> Everywhere except in the mountain camp. It started one day when Dudley Do-Right entered Inspector Fenwick's office. Inspector, Inspector Fenwick. He's gone, disappeared. What is the matter, Dudley? Inspector Fenwick has met with foul play. You know the inspector never goes any place without his hat. My daddy, oh, what shall we do? We shall organize a search party. And so the entire detachment set off to find their beloved inspector. Meanwhile, in the back room of Snidely Whiplash's miserable shack, cowed, beaten, dejected was... Snidely Whiplash himself. Well, who did you expect, Inspector Fanwick? You seem depressed today, Snidely. True, all my life I've been outwitting the Mounties, and where has it gotten me? This miserable shack in the Canadian Redwoods. Oh, it's not so bad, Snidely. Working my fingers to the bone, the bridges I've blown up, the mortgages I've foreclosed, the women I've tied to railroad tracks, and what does it amount to? A miserable shack in the Canadian Redwoods in the low-rent district. Gee, Snidely, I never heard you talk this way before. Homer, something's gone out of me. I can't get any real zing in my leers anymore. Look. Pretty sad. And my laugh, he, 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 hasn't got the zonk it used to have. No zing and no zonk, huh? No zing or zonk. I'm going to step aside, Homer. Let a younger man take over my place. I'm going to turn myself over to the Mounties. Gee, Snidely, it, it just breaks my heart to hear you talk this way. Well, Homer, when you ain't got that zonk, life just ain't worth it. <laughs> And so the arch-villain trudged into the deserted Monty Post. Take me, I'm yours. Snidely whiplash himself. Put on the derbies and... Eh? It's strange. There's no one here over whom to turn myself over. How do I look, Homer? Let's see. Dudley, do right. Come in here. <laughs> You sent for me, sir? Oh, good to have you back, sir. We've all been worried. Searched the entire countryside. But I'm not the inspector. Do you think we can get away with it, Homer? Why not? Nell, your daddy has returned. Why, that's not my daddy. I know, Nell. He doesn't look the same, but how could he after the ordeal he's been through? Ordeal? Dudley, I want you to lock up Nell in the stockade. That's an order. Yes, sir, Inspector Fenwick. And may I say, sir, it's good to have you back. Come along, Nell. Dudley, do right. You are a nut. What Dudley didn't know was that Inspector Fenwick wasn't lost at all. He had just stepped out for a haircut. It's good to know I can pop away for a bit. With Dudley do right in charge, I have nothing to worry about. Camp Town ladies, sing this song. Do right, do right, dim, 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 oh. Do right, can't I leave the camp for a minute without returning to utter chaos? And whom are you? What do you mean, whom am I? I'm, I'm Inspector Fenwick. You, Inspector Fenwick? Impossible. I'm locking you up for impersonating an officer and being out of uniform. Out of uniform? Where's your hat, soldier? Oh, I've got to get that hat back so it'll come to his senses. And the inspector began to tunnel his way out of the stockade. Meanwhile, Dudley, I've got a very important cape, um, assignment for you. I want you to reroute the mail train from point A, where it goes around the gorge, to point B, which goes directly over the gorge. But there are no tracks over the gorge, sir. Dudley, don't you see? That'll speed up the mail delivery. Oh, yes, sir. We must stop Snidely and his fiendish plan. There, how's that, inspector? Fine, Dudley, just fine. The train should be coming along now. We're just in time, Nell. We can prevent the train from going over the gorge. The only problem is that we are on the other side of the gorge. You're right. All is lost. I've 
failed. You haven't failed, Father. We can still prevent the train from going over the gorge. How now? By doing what every red-blooded Canadian girl would do in a similar case as this. We'll build a trestle across the gorge. Curses, 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 curses! Oh, you mustn't do that to your hat, Inspector. I'll take that hat, Dudley. Notice anything familiar about me, do right? Why, you are Inspector Fenwick. Then who is that other chap? Oh, never mind, Dudley, never mind. <laughs> hey, what's so funny, Snidely? You didn't get the plunder or the mail train? Well, one thing I did get, Homer. And that is? My zonk! <laughs> Private Bullwinkle, sir, with a message. Just in time. Is it important? Is it? Just look. Well, last time, we left things in a pretty pickle indeed. General Broadbeam was in the guardhouse taking an examination to see if he was sentenced to the jute mill or the rock pile. The villainous Mr. Big was alone in a vault full of precious obsidasium, and our heroes, Rocky and Bullwinkle, had just been placed in front of a sinister-looking wall by none other than Boris Badenov, disguised as... General Badenov, please. Okay, boys. Left face. Ready. Aim. Fire. A volley of rifle shots rang out and our boys would have been in a bad way but for one thing. In ordering left face, Boris had pointed them in the wrong direction. Well, I'll fix that. Right face. No, about face. No, left. And while Boris tried frantically to correct his mistake, Colonel Bogus was examining General Broadbeam's examination papers. But the only thing you could possibly be is... Yes? A general. You're released, sir. And the general dashed out of the guardhouse in time to save our heroes. In no time at all, the disguised Boris found himself in the pokey. I told you not to go on giving orders, darling. I only got one more to give, Natasha. What's that? Shut up your mouth! And in just a few minutes more, General Broadbeam had the whole obsidasium vault surrounded by a company of soldiers. We'll try to sneak up on him from inside, General. Right, Rocky. Now hear this, Mr. Big. You can't possibly get away. Come out with your hands up. Now that I am so close to success, never. Unfortunately, Rocky chose that moment to enter the vault, but before he knew what was happening, had been seized, bound, and gagged by Mr. Big. Now we shall see who has the upper hand. And grabbing a huge ingot of the precious obsidasium, the arch criminal started out of the vault. No, I got you. Oof. <laughs> Stand back, stand back, Mr. Moose, if you don't want your little friend to be hurt. You wouldn't dare. Would he, Rock? <laughs> Ooh. And as Bullwinkle stood by helplessly, Mr. Big stepped boldly out of the building. Here he comes, men. Ready, aim. Hold the General. That's my buddy he's got with him. You mean Rocky is a hostage? He's a squirrel, and don't you forget it. I guess we're helpless. Sure enough, Mr. Big, with Rocky as his prisoner, marched unscathed to the front gate of Fort Knickknack and stepped through to freedom with the upsidasium still in his grasp. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean this story ends with the bad guys winning? Looks like it, Mr. Moose. Well, that does it. I'll never watch TV again. But just then, a remarkable thing happened. I thought so. What do you mean, remarkable? Everything is exactly the same as it was. I... Oh... Oh, what is it? Sure enough, the fabulous anti-gravity metal was up to its old tricks and was lifting Mr. Big higher and higher under the air. Let go! Let go, you fool! Never! But that's a one-way trip you're on, fella! Let loose of that stuff! We'll catch you! Never! Never! It's mine! Do you hear? Mine! Mine! And the greedy thief, unwilling to part with his ill-gotten gains, kept rising higher and higher under the air until he disappeared from view and was never seen again. Rocky was safe and the villains foiled. Yay! Well, our story did have a happy ending after all. But boy, it was close. And now here's a final word from our hero himself who says... <laughs>